G'day. If you've ever been through a breakup, you've probably heard the old cliche, don't worry, mate, there's plenty more fish in the sea. Well, that'd be great if it was true, but it's not. We're really running low on fish these days. Industrial fishing is taking more fish out of the ocean faster than fish can reproduce. And if nothing changes, we'll soon live in a nearly fishless world. So let me tell you something you probably haven't heard of before. One of the reasons fish populations can't recover from overfishing is that fish sex, it's a tricky business. <laughs> so let's take oysters for example. A male oyster can't just hop over to the next rock and sweet talk a female oyster in a courtship. <laughs> Start fooling around. No, they're stuck to rocks. They have to broadcast billions of eggs and billions of sperm, hoping, wishing, crossing their little oyster fingers, that <laughs> maybe a sperm will meet an egg. If you imagine an Olympic-sized swimming pool and you place one drop of sperm at one end and one drop of eggs at the other, that will give you an idea of just how challenging sex is underwater. This is why most marine species have evolved to produce millions upon billions of sperm and eggs. Sex in the ocean, when you really think about it, is just a numbers game. Every little fish baby that's born is statistically a miracle. And if we want to save our oceans, and by that I mean save ourselves, we need to help fish reproduce. But how? Well. I grew up on an oyster farm in northwest Australia. My dad paid me $5 a bucket to harvest oysters during the day. In the evenings, we'd sit by our pool-sized dam, feeding my pets. Now, you likely had a pet cat or a pet dog growing up. Well, I had a pet shark, a pet kangaroo, and a family of pet grouper. <laughs> now, one night, under a full moon, I was cooking a barbecue enjoying a cold beer, when I noticed my groupers were getting frisky. <laughs> Fish tails were slapping the surface and the water was churning with foam. I was witnessing an underwater mating of epic proportions. <laughs> several weeks later, I was out on the farm cleaning the oyster cages and I noticed the mangroves were teeming with thousands of baby grouper. So it turns out, by keeping my grouper in this pool-sized dam, I greatly increased their odds of conceiving. And then several years later, I went to university for marine biology. And that's when I realized why salmon have evolved to swim hundreds of miles across oceans and up rivers to spawn and breed in the shallow pools of their youth. It's not nostalgic, it's practical. The smaller the pool, the higher the odds you'll conceive, and the less chance predators are going to eat your babies. And this is pretty much how aquaculture works. It's how we farm many fish species, including groupers, snappers, and bivalves like oysters and scallops. If you've seen farm-raised labels on the packs of fish at the supermarket, they're talking about ponds and tanks on land or cages just offshore. Now these man-made setups work well enough to raise fish for food, but they're never gonna cut it for conservation. If we wanna repopulate our oceans and prevent endangered marine species from going extinct, we need to help a lot of different species in a lot of different places. Now as a captain, I've logged more than 250,000 miles at sea, so it's given me a lot of time to contemplate what can be done to help? As I've stood witness to the slow deteriorations of our oceans. And I believe that mobile aquaculture is the answer. Instead of trying to raise fish on land, let's help nature raise fish at sea. That way we can meet the fish where they are, when they're ready to breed, using the water they live in. I'm Captain Ken Math, the founder of Sea Life Rescue. And we designed a mobile oyster hatchery to fit inside a shipping container 
First, we collected the local oysters and filtered the water. Then we turned up the heat, we dimmed the lights, and I played some Barry White music softly in the background <laughs> to get them in the mood. And it worked. We fertilized every viable egg, allowing them to develop into larvae. And we fed the little oyster babies nutrient-rich foods until they were old enough to be released. And finally, we delivered them to the marine protected areas of the bay so they could grow and do their oyster magic. And the reason why these baby oysters are so good for the environment is that they're filter feeders. They eat algae by pumping water through their little bodies. And anything they don't consume is expelled as feces, like the microplastics, and sinks to the bottom. And the crazy thing is, one mature oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. Just one oyster every day. So can you imagine what a billion oysters can do? So far, we've released oysters back into the Long Island area, and in the future, we can release oysters in other areas that are suffering from algal blooms or environmental pollution. So, we've successfully shown that we can breed shellfish on the go. Now it's time to hit the road, or more importantly, the seas. Here in Florida, we're in desperate need for more grouper. Not only because they're delicious, <laughs> but they're also the natural predator of this horrifying invasive species, the lionfish. The grouper have been so overfished that the lionfish is running wild, decimating local fish populations. So our goal at Sea Life Rescue is to breed grouper and other fish species in hatcheries on ships to keep this gnarly little creature in check. So I don't want to be standing on the beach in 20 years' time having to explain to my daughter where all the fish have gone. We humans have been treating the ocean like an unlimited bank account, taking and taking and taking, without ever making a deposit. We need to start making these deposits now and consistently before it's too late. And yes, it's pretty close to being too late. Just like reforesting, replaces harvested trees, these mobile breeding hatcheries can repopulate our oceans. My hopes are that tomorrow, ships like these will be crisscrossing the ocean, not with oil and gas, but baby fish on board. These mobile breeding hatcheries allow fish to have more babies, generation after generation, because we make fish sex easy. <laughs> so what can we do? Well, I challenge you to first support your local ocean conservation group. And second, if you do eat fish, know what's on your plate make sure it was sustainably farmed or caught. And if we all do this, we can bring our oceans back to life and we can repopulate our future. Thank you.